Okay, case presentation. This will help you a lot in trying to figure out uh, that weird, the weird type chest pain. 69 year old man develops, here's first the classic one. Worsening substernal chest pressure after shoveling snow in the morning before work. Tells his wife he feels a squeezing pain that's radiating to his jaw and left shoulder. He appears anxious and his wife calls for an ambulance as he's distressed and sweating profusely. Remember, sweating? Okay, that's fight or flight. That, that to me, if they're having chest pain and they're sweating, it's probably their heart. Past medical history is significant for hypertension, and he has been told by his doctor that he has borderline diabetes. Okay, so look, he's already got two risk factors right there. And he's 69, so he's older. That's another risk factor. On exam, in the ER, he's anxious and diaphoretic. Not good. His heart rate is 112. Okay, that's high. Remember, uh, tachycardia starts at 100. Normal, it should be 70. Blood pressure, 159 or 93. That shows fight or flight activated. Okay, the guy's scared, he's having significant pain. The EKG is nonspecific other than ST segment depressions in the anterior leads. Okay, the anterior leads would be over here, these here. So he's got uh, depressions in those leads. This person's having more lateral ischemia here. Okay, uh, three doses sublingual provide little relief. And that's because it's a whopping heart attack. So you gotta get them on a nitro drip. Other presentations. Presentations of MI can be diverse. Some patients do not have any chest discomfort, whereas others may be writhing in pain. It's important to recognize that atypical presentations, such as dyspnea, and I, I would highly recommend that you remember this slide, okay? This may save your butt someday. It may be a family member that you end up saving, okay? So let's just go through these. Dyspnea, syncope, okay, that's fainting, palpitations, Okay, remember we talked about that. It just feels like uh, you're, you're having uh, extra beats all the time. Isolated nausea and vomiting. Okay, you're going to see that in your female patients with heart attack or angina. Very often, they only get epigastric uh, discomfort or nausea with vomiting. It might be just an upset stomach. Okay, remember that, especially in someone that has a history of heart disease. Okay, trust me, I'm an expert on this. I've seen this so many times. Abdominal pain and fatigue. Okay, so any of those, that middle jowl stuff, can indicate acute coronary syndrome, but it's usually in women. These atypical presentations are more common in women, elderly people, people with diabetes, and cardiac transplant recipients. So people with diabetes, they don't have good sensory function anymore. So they're not gonna feel severe pain. Elderly, same thing. Cardiac transplant, they don't have nerves to their heart. Okay, we already cut all those out. So they're not going to have any pain fibers returning back to their spinal column to even sense pain. So they could be having a heart attack and have no idea, except maybe they'll have some shortness of breath or something. Feeling of indigestion may be the only symptom and occurs more often with inferior wall MI. So that'd be another one. The inferior wall MI with a male could present with just indigestion, but more common in women of any type of heart attack. STEMI, and STEMI, whatever. Highly specific presentations include substernal pressure discomfort. Okay, that's the pressure discomfort substernal. That's nearly classic, which may radiate to the arm, left uh, neck and shoulder. If it's left side, that's pretty classic, associated with diaphoresis and anxiety. Some patients present with jaw, neck, ear, arm, or epigastric pain only. These symptoms should be considered equivalent to angina if they're clearly related to stress or exertion or are quickly relieved by nitroglycerin, okay? So you give them a nitroglycerin, goes away, get them to the hospital, okay? I've made that mistake before too, uh, you know, because you just kind of don't really want to sometimes, especially if it's a family member. Just do it, okay? Because otherwise you might have a dead family member. Sharp stabbing or pain reproducible on palpation. This is, this is great, I love this one. Does not exclude acute coronary syndrome. Now he's got it referenced here. <laughs> Um, I would love to contact him because that's pretty amazing. So you can actually push on the chest and reproduce the pain and yet it's cardiac. Okay, so that's a pretty good one. So you can even get fooled, you know, 99 out of 100 times you push on the chest and you reproduce the pain, it's musculoskeletal. Okay, but you can actually get bagged here.